Hello, my dear students. This is Dr. Shabana Begum, Associate Professor Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bangalore. Today, let us discuss about body organization, one of the topic under Unit 1, that is Animal Architecture. The topic will give you an insight as to how the body of an organism is structurally organized. So the learning objective of this topic being to explore more about structural organization in animals. So the slide gives you an information about the different grades or levels or patterns of body organizations which are the protoplasmic grade, cellular grade, tissue grade, then organ grade and organ system grade of body organization with examples. So, higher levels of organization are built from lower levels. Cells are organized into tissues, tissues into organs, organs into systems and systems into organisms. Let us learn about the various types of body organizations in the animals which are the examples for each type. So, you can give an introduction to this topic. So, here say though animals are multicellular, the level of organization of cells varies from one animal to another. Certain animals have a loose mass of cells and show the cellular level of organization. Such animals have been categorized into the phylum Porifera. As we move on, the complexity of body design amplifies and the division of labor occurs among the tissues. These animals exhibit tissue levels of organization and are classified as cylindrates. Phylum Platyhelminthus and Ascalminthus forms have an organ level of organization. Non-chordates such as annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms and chordates have a specialized organ system for their physiological activities. They have the organ system level of organization. Although these animals have organ system levels of organization, the complexities of organ systems vary and are categorized into different phyla. So, with this background, let us discuss the body organization in animals from protoplasmic level to organ level organization in detail. Firstly, what is protoplasmic grade of organization? So, you all know, protozoans are the unicellular simplest organisms which exhibit protoplasmic grade of organization. So, what is protoplasm? Protoplasm, as you all know, is the living content of a cell comprising the cytoplasm and a nucleus. Fine. So, all the functions are confined within the boundaries of a single cell, the fundamental unit of life. Within the cell, protoplasm is differentiated into organelles. These are capable of performing specialized function. So, what is a cell organelle? Cell organelle is a discrete subcellular structure with a particular function. Fine. Then the specialized cytoplasmic structures or the organelles carry out specific functions thus illustrating division of labor, possessing distinct supportive structures, locomotor devices, fibrils and simple sensory structures. For example, amoeba, the simplest protozoan, has a single cell in its body with contractile vacuoles for osmoregulation, food vacuoles for nutritive function and the nucleus for reproductive function. Next, let me tell you what is cellular grade of organization. Right? You know what a cell is. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. So, here cellular organization is an aggregation of cells that are functionally differentiated 
and shown with the simplest metazoans such as volvox and sponges. They do not possess any structures that can be considered as tissues or organs. A division of labor is evident so that some cells are concerned with, for example, reproduction, others with nutrition. The cells have little tendency to become organized into true tissues but may form definite patterns or layers. Some flagellates such as volvox that have distinct somatic and reproductive cells might be placed at the cellular level of organization. So many authors have placed sponges at this level of organization as they have cells specialized for particular functions. For example, there are cells called pinacocytes, guanocytes, porocytes, thesocytes, scleroblasts, then amoebocytes, archaeocytes, etc. So you can say the pinacocytes when you talk about it forms the outer covering of the sponge and it may also phagocytize large food particles. So in this diagram you can see very clearly later the various functions performed by different cells in the sponge body. The coanocytes also called as flagellated cells they generate water current and filter food particles for uh, from the water. Then there are cells which are called as amoebocytes. These delivers nutrients to cells and differentiate into other cell types. Cells called porocytes controls water flow through ostia. There are cells which are called as thesocytes. These are a type of amoebocytes which store food. Cells called scleroblasts secrete siliceous or calcareous spicules which form the skeletal elements of sponge body. Oocyte as you know are the egg cells. Cholinocytes secrete collagen etc etc. So although cellular specialization and division of labor is seen among the cells they do not show coordination with each other since nerve cells and sensory cells are absent. Hence different types of cells are functionally isolated. True tissues are absent in this type of organization. Cells are not strongly associated to perform a specific collective function. Next type of body organization is tissue grade that is tissue level of organization. It is a step beyond the preceding is the aggregation of similar cells into definite patterns or layers thus becoming tissue. Sponges are considered by some authors to belong to this grade although jellyfishes and their relatives that is the cnidarians are examples and exhibit tissue grade of organization. So both the groups are still largely of cellular grade of organization because most cells are scattered and not organized into tissues. An excellent example of a tissue in cnidarians is the nerve net in which nerve cells and their processes form a definite tissue structure with the function of coordination. The cells that are performing similar functions are highly coordinated and are aggregated into tissues. So this picture will give you about the structural organization in the case of tissue grade or level of bodies organization where there you can see the outer ectoderm, inner uh, gastroderm layer, then in between there is a mesoglial layer, apart from the, that there is a nerve net in between, there are cells which are called as epithelial, muscular cells etc. The next type of body organization is tissue organ level of organization. Here the aggregation of tissues into organs is further step in complexity. Organs are usually composed of more than one kind of tissues and have a more specialized function than tissues. The first appearance of this level is in flatworms that is the platyhelminthus forms in which 
there are well defined organs such as eye spots proboscis gonads etc in fact the reproductive organs are well organized into a reproductive system so as you all know platyhelminthes are the first bilaterally symmetrical acelomate metazoans to have reached the organ level of organization further they are triploblastic because of a third or middle cellular germ layer called mesoderm which lies between outer ectoderm and inner endoderm next type of organ system is the organ system level or grade of body organization where when organs work together to perform some functions we have highest level of organization that is the organ system in higher animals several organs are associated to form a distinct system concerned with a specific function like digestion respiration circulation excretion and reproduction the simplest animals that show this type of organization are nemertian worms which have a complete digestive system distinct from circulatory system the other group of marine worms such as ascelminths then annelids and all other higher phyla show this kind of organization There are 11 different kinds of organ systems observed in metazoans such as the skeletal, muscular, integumentary, digestive, respiratory, circulatory, excretory, nervous, endocrine, immune and reproductive system. The nervous system and the endocrine system are called the controlling systems of the body while the remaining systems are called the working systems of the body so the great evolutionary diversity of these organ systems is covered in acelomates pseudocelomates mollusks segmented worms arthropods aquatic mandibulates protostomes lophophorates and then echinoderms ketognaths hemichordates chordates fishes tetrapods and modern amphibians reptilian groups birds and mammals so the outcome of the study is the structural organization in animals or any other life form is the same at the fundamental level or in other words all life currently living on earth are made up of cells and when cells get together they form tissues tissues in turn form organs and organ systems so here is the hierarchical organization can be seen from cells when cells are joined together they form tissues and tissues when in turn will form organs and group of organs in turn will form the organ system so this is called as the hierarchical body organization in animals So as stated above the structural organization in animals starts from the smallest fundamental unit the cell where it's made up of a protoplasm and a group of cells that perform a similar function to form tissues when tissues group together to perform specific functions they form the organs in a nutshell we can say the unicellular organisms like amoeba have a single cell in the body and hence the organization in its body is called protoplasmic grade of organization some organisms have only cells in their body this is called cellular grade of organization example the sponges or porifers some have tissues example cilantrates they are said to have cell tissue grade organization while some have organs they are said to have tissue organ grade of organization example being the platyhelminthes lastly all other higher animals have organ system grade of body organization so there ends the discussion and you have learnt about the various grades of body organization so now let us 
learn some more details with the MCQs that is the multiple choice questions now the first one being the animals of phylum protozoa exhibit cellular grade protoplasmic grade tissue organ grade or organ system grade so the answer B is protoplasmic grade of body organization the second MCQ is the basis of classification of animals into protozoa and metazoa is a symmetry b cleavage c number of cells d body shape so the option c is the correct answer that is the number of cells next the grade of body organization in phylum cylindrata is a protoplasmic level b cellular level c tissue organ level d is cell tissue level the answer being d that is the cell tissue level next mcq the body organization in human being is a organ system level b tissue organ level c organ uh, cell organ level d is cell tissue level and the answer being a that is organ system level the grade of organization in tape form is a option a is tissue organ b organ system c protoplasmic d cellular and the answer is tissue organ level of body organization then which grade of organization is found in animals belonging to phylum platyhelminthes option a tissue organ b organ system c protoplasmic d cellular so the answer is a that is tissue organ grade of body organization okay girls this uh, with this i will stop my lecture here on the body organization and here are some of the references which you can refer for further information thank you